Hey there everyone, my name's Stephen and I want to welcome you to our very first Good Life online church gathering. We're joined with some familiar faces in Tim and Ellie and we're going to walk you through what church looks like in the times that we're facing as a community. There's no doubt things are so different to what they were last week and even the weeks before. And we're going to be doing some new things. And I just want to invite you to participate in those, to join in and to lean in as we discover together what community looks like in the context of what we're facing, not just as a community and a nation, but even the world. And so as we gather and come together, we're going to walk through some different things. We're going to have some expressions of worship. We're going to tell some story about some key moments that have been really significant in our life uh, and journey as good life. Tim's going to share some encouraging thoughts. We're going to create some space for prayer. And I'm just really looking forward to the absolute privilege it is that we can even use the technology that we have here today to be able to gather together, uh, even though we might be isolated in our homes. COVID-19, pandemic, social distancing, flattening the curve. These are all words that we may not have ever heard before, but they've become oh so familiar in the days and the weeks that have preceded us. And so as we embark on this journey, and as we look at the realities that we face today, it is just such a privilege to be able to come and gather like this. And it's up to us to discover what community looks like, to rediscover how we do church in these times. And I have no doubt that God is going to use these times significantly both to impact your lives and the lives of us as a community of believers. But before I go any further, I just want to take a moment to read a scripture to you. It's Psalm 91. It's a scripture that has been so incredibly important in my own life and my own journey and has meant a lot to me in times of of, of heartache and need. And I trust it will be an incredible encouragement to you. Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and a rampart. What an amazing scripture we can grab hold of in times like this. That we know that we are protected and covered under the shadow of the Almighty. And I'd just like to take a few moments just to pray and dedicate this new chapter, this new season uh, to the Lord. So let us pray together. Father, we certainly do live in uncertain times. But I I thank you so much that you are never changing. You are incredibly faithful. And today, Father, we absolutely make the choice to fear not, to walk in the comfort that comes from you and the promises in your word. You are good, you are trustworthy, and you are faithful. And we are so grateful, Lord. And so as we gather online in a place that we've never been before, Lord, I pray that whether it's in lounge rooms or on devices or wherever people may be watching this today, there'll be an overwhelming sense of your presence and that we as a community are coming together under that one name, the name above all names, Jesus Christ. And Father, we just give you all the praise. We give you all the glory and we give you all the honour. Amen. So I'm going to take a few moments just to talk about a couple of things we just want you to be aware of uh, as we enter into this new season. And uh, the context of what we're going to do today is, you know, Tim is going to share some encouraging thoughts with us at some point as as we gather. Ellie's going to lead us in a time of of prayer. We're also just going to take a a bit of space to reflect uh, on a song which has been an incredible anthem for us as a community here at Good Life. And it may feel a bit strange for you in the context of you watching this at home and you know, things that are always a, a little unfamiliar just are a little bit awkward until they become normal. And so I just encourage you to lean in and um, participate uh, to the best you can wherever you may be watching this. So why? Why are we doing this? Well, obviously the government has made some uh, declarations around what the expectation is for us uh, in terms of gathering as, as big groups of people. But it's also an opportunity for us to rethink, as I said earlier, how we do church. And I believe this is going to be a significant time for us moving forward. And maybe some of the things that come out of our, uh, you know, this season we walk will actually become normal, even out once uh, this this pandemic does its thing. And so we had to make the the really hard but right decision to close Good Life Community on uh, Centre on Friday. And as a result, we're obviously gathering here online. 
and we'll continue to explore and experiment and create a place uh, where you can connect uh, each week as we join together on Sundays. So I would encourage you to stay connected, to make sure that you, you jump on the socials, jump on our website, and uh, you'll be able to see the address on the screen here. Get on there and find out what's happening and how you can remain connected. Um, but it's also vitally important that we adhere to the advice that is being given to us to actually keep our distance, to stay away in, from group gatherings and those things so that we can help to flatten this curve together. One of the things that we are going to be doing is keeping our cafe open, but not as it has been. We're going to have a drive through service. And so you'll be able to text through your coffee order, get that daily coffee, um, come through and it'll be delivered out uh, to you in, in, the, in the car park. And I just want to thank all the team that are going to be working hard to make that happen. You'll be able to order some of the, our, you know, our snacks, some of the baked goods that are there, some drinks. And we're also going to be kicking off a dinner menu. And so that you can pre-order a meal to be able to take home and have at night. And so check out the details on the screen and um, you know, invite you to be able to be a part of that. We also want you to not be afraid to reach out. If you're struggling at this time and you need some help, you just need someone to talk to, please contact us. Uh, go to our website, the details are all there. And um, we would more than be willing to reach out and just have someone to have a chat or connect. And if you have any needs that might be out there that you're aware of, um, we're not always going to know everything that's going on. And so we're so reliant, and that's where community comes into it, that we each get in. We look out for our neighbours. We look out for each other in that. So what does church look like? As I said, we're going to continue to gather here and join together uh, each Sunday. And uh, we're exploring what this looks like moving forward. So it may not always look like this, um, but we are committed to creating a space where we can come together to be encouraged, to worship, to pray together. Uh, it's just so vitally important. There's something that is going to take place. Uh, churches all across the country uh, are really calling believers to a place of prayer. So they're encouraging us that every night at 1900 hours, we're going to be gathering together and praying for 19 minutes. And that will run through till April 19. We believe that prayer works. We believe that prayer is an important part of our journey and even a discipline for us as believers. And so I would encourage you, wherever you may be, to join in this call. The churches all around this country, churches and individuals all around this country will gather together every evening to see this, uh, this situation that we face come to an end. That people would be, you know, lives wouldn't be lost to the extent that we're seeing today and that we'd see this pandemic come to an end. And so with that in mind, we'd like to just create a space now uh, with some time to pray. To pray and I'm going to ask Ellie uh, who's going to lead us in this. And so Ellie, please, thank you for jo um, joining us and thank you for this prayer time. Thanks, Stephen. Will you guys join me and pray with me now? God, I pray for our community. God, as we go through this time of um, crisis, God, this time of unknown, that we would continue to be wise. We would be respectful and kind and gentle. God, that we will not let fear rule us. We will not become overwhelmed by the fear of the things that we see that we don't understand. God, I pray for those in our community who don't have family and friends nearby, who really found their place and their human contact in a lot of these places that are closing down like our center. God, I pray that they will find that contact and encouragement from you. God, that you will be with them. And God, I pray that you would help us to remember them as well. God, as they reach out, that we would also reach out as often as we can, digitally, as well as we can. And God, I pray for our world. God, for the whole globe, I pray for healing. God, I pray for physical healing. I pray for emotional healing and mental. God, that you will be with us. God, that the things that we are learning now, the things that, the lessons, the things that are being taught to us that are so important, God, that when we come through on the other side, we will not forget them. God, we will continue to practice these wonderful things. I pray, God, for provision. God, whether that's medical supplies, whether that's our emotional needs, whether that's for our physical health, God, I pray that you will provide for us, that we will find 
whether through that basic human kindness and sharing or whether that is through supernatural means, God, that we have enough. I know that's something we worry about. But God, I pray that you will calm that worry and we will not be afraid and that we will find that we have enough. God, help us to be kind. Help us to be gentle. I pray that you be with us through these times. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Truly, what an amazing confidence we have that God invites us to come and make our requests known to him, to pray. And his word says if we have that confidence that he hears us, He's also going to answer us. And so I encourage you, remember to pray. Be a part of what Stephen said at 1900 hours, which translates to 7 p.m. for us non-military types. But it's really important. And we've, we've been doing that in our home group. We've been dialing in. We're using Zoom. You can use WhatsApp. You can have everyone's face in the same space and be praying together. And we've been really encouraged by that. But the thing that I find really encouraging is when I look at God's Word, when I'm reading through the Scriptures and particularly Jesus' interactions with his friends, I find over and over again that Jesus desperately cares about his friends and their peace. You know, they go through times where they are deeply worried. Jesus said things were coming and and they're going, what? Hang on a second. That, that's not what we expected. And we've been talking through this for the last weeks. The expectations that people had of what the kingdom of the Messiah was going to look like. And all of a sudden it was different. And, you know, people got all sort of, you know, disheveled and didn't know, you know what, to, what to think. And Jesus would often stop and say, don't let your hearts be troubled. You know, I think of, you know, John chapter 14, right in the first verse, Jesus is in this conversation with his friends and, you know, they're worried about the things that he's saying. And Jesus just says, don't let your hearts be troubled. You trust in God, trust also in me. And then the context of it, he says, because in my father's house, there's many rooms. If it wasn't true, I wouldn't have told you. I'm not here to mislead you. Jesus really is sort of saying, hey, this is, this is not all there is. Don't get so focused on the here and now that you miss the bigger thing. You know, later on in that same chapter, Jesus says, you know, I'm, I'm leaving you with a gift. And that gift is peace of mind and heart. Jesus says, that's, that's my gift. So don't, don't let this just become overwhelming. You know, there is a reality. My heart is, is heavy. Some of the decisions that we've had to make this past week, closing the center down was such a heartbreaking moment for me. But I have this deep, rich sense of peace that God has this. It's not something that has caught him off guard or something that he can't walk us through. And so when, when our hearts are heavy, we need to really consider the, the reality of what Jesus has said and allow his peace, to really settle us as we center ourselves on him. It's not about panic and it's not about this laissez-faire, whatever. The things Stephen said are so important that we actually do take note of them, that we keep our social distancing, that we wash our hands, that we do all those things. It's not panic, but it's not a she'll be right mate kind of attitude. So it's important that we allow God's word to feed our faith in this season. I love Psalm 91. What you read before was beautiful, Stephen. But let me also point you to Psalm 46. In 46, the writer says this, God is our refuge and our strength. He is our ever present help in time of trial or in the New Living Translation, he's always ready to help. Like he's always ready to, to jump in. So we will not fear, even if earthquakes come, even if mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble and, and the waters surge. God himself is the one who brings peace. His city will not be destroyed. 
The nations are in an uproar. Kingdoms crumble. God thunders. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty, listen to these words, is here amongst us. He hasn't abandoned us. He hasn't bailed. And so I want to encourage you because the Psalms are full of words of hope and peace. You know, as we've gone through our journey in in good life, we've found seasons where themes come to the forefront. A little while ago, Craig wrote a series of songs that were really life-giving and liberating. And then they were released in a series called My Story, His Glory. Don't you like the theme of that? It's, It's our story, but it's for His glory. All the things that we find ourselves in the midst of, We're living it out moment by moment, but it is ultimately for His glory. One of those songs that I really do encourage you to meditate on and we're going to lead into here is this, this song that just is entitled, Even If You Don't. And I don't want to preempt it too much because it really speaks for itself and speaks into this situation. So my story, His glory even if you don't. One of the more commonly known Bible stories is that of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And they endured this fiery furnace um, and God delivered them from that. But the story coming up to that was that they wouldn't bow to an idol that the king had made and wanted everyone to worship. and they. They refused and the king actually challenged them and said, what God can save you? And their response was, our God is able, but even if he doesn't, he's still God and we won't bow to your your idol. Even If You Don't is probably one of the most challenging songs uh, I think I've ever owned as my own heart cry. We were coming out with a song right um, when I had, right after I had hurt myself, I had a back and a neck problem that came out and I was like out of work for about eight weeks and laying on the floor and just so much pain. And it just felt like I was never gonna get better. And I remember um, just being in a really dark place, actually. You can move a mountain, you can roll back the sea And change these circumstances in front of me Even if you don't Often uh, we have this expectation of God that He's going to answer me uh, according to my expectation and I've gone through seasons of life as many many of us have where if we allowed ourselves to be defined by that moment you'd walk away probably verbalizing a disappointment with God Um, but a disappointment with God is based in our expectation and not his character and even if you don't, is a song that, that calls us back unashamedly to center ourselves on the character of God, that He is absolutely who He says He is, regardless of my experience at that time. I remember just playing that over and over and just sort of letting it become my anthem, like whether God healed me or took this pain away, it was a choice that I was going to make. I was going to praise him. I was going to worship him. He was my God, whether he healed me or didn't.
think our God is worthy of, of our praise regardless of whether we understand Him or our circumstance. And instead of just constantly asking Him to change our circumstance, that we actually choose to worship Him in that circumstance. You know, uh, I've re-listened to that again. Um, I find that so encouraging and so life-giving. And, and I hope during this time that you will find space to worship in your own home or wherever you are, if it's in a vehicle, you know, that you find space to, to reflect on those thoughts. You know, you can get a hold of a lot of that music on Spotify. Uh, if you look up Craig Ross, uh, those videos, the My Story, His Glory series is available on YouTube. Uh, we're going to connect it through the ACC website, connect it to our own website. Uh, we want to make ways to make this accessible. You know, that song in a lot of ways sort of says to me, where is my hope? Is my hope in the fulfillment of things I've hoped for? Or is my hope in God, who He said He is? And I know that's a challenging thought. It's a really challenging question. Because if our hope is in the things that we're hoping for, man, they could come up short over and over and over again. But God has actually said He'll never leave, He'll never forsake, He'll never fail us, He'll never come up short that His will will be accomplished. And I reference back to what I said in John chapter 14, that, that this whole time God is preparing a place that where He is, we might also be. You know, and so the question for us is, how does this play out in our faith now? You know, even though we've had to shut the physical doors of the Good Life Center, we don't shut our hearts. It doesn't shut down our purpose for being. It certainly doesn't shut down the opportunities we have to engage our community. You know, there were so many tears shed on Friday as we actually had to shut the doors down and people realized that this place of connectedness wasn't going to be there. But I was able to say again and again, we actually aren't going anywhere. We've just got to create new ways of connectedness, of supporting one another, of caring for one another. And those opportunities are only going to grow in the weeks and maybe even months ahead. We're going to have opportunity to serve one another. We're going to have opportunity to serve those on the front line. And I really invite you and encourage you, stay connected and look for those opportunities. Our cafe is not just going to be a place where people can you know, drive up and purchase food. I really believe there'll come a time where our cafe and our resources will go to really service those on the front lines and those in need. You know, we've got frontline workers who are single parents and their kids are, are at home. What can we do to take the, the pressure off some of them and really begin to engage as the hands and feed of Jesus, the practical communique of this hope that we talk about, this peace, this provision that we talk about. You know, it's been a really hard decision shutting down this center um, and the workspace because all of our, our team are now unemployed as so many others in our nation are or may well be. You know, it's a really big opportunity for us to take the call of God to tithing very seriously. Tithing is not something that is just this ritual or routine or, or, or keeps a, a building alive. Tithe is a decision that we take that which God has blessed us with and we provide for others' needs. Now, when that comes to a building and the, and the tithe has, has done things for a building, that is wonderful. But the building only becomes a vehicle to serve other people. The whole point of it 
is that God's name and his purpose be declared. You know, there is a need. There's a need immediately for our staff. I do hope that we will be able to continue to support them. There are some families that, that live uh, pretty tight. And we are praying that our church family will step up to this opportunity. And I pray beyond that. You know, you read in the book of Acts and it says that the people, uh, there was no need amongst them because people would take that which they have and come and lay it at the feet of the apostles to be distributed amongst the people. Wouldn't it be incredible if beyond even supporting our own staff and team, we were able to distribute to the needs in our church family, in our community? But we can only do that if we all step into this space. And so I'm really going to ask you, would you trust God and tithe that first 10% portion of everything we have? Some people will have much in this season, some will have very little, but we have a mutual responsibility to one another. Would you please consider it? Would you please consider taking God at his word that he will provide? If you, if you want to take that on, you can continue to give through the website. Uh, you can give through direct debit. You can give through the giving app. You know, I want, to tell, I want to tell you something really encouraging though too. We had members of our community who have stepped up this week and said, you know what, keep taking my gym membership. $50 a month, you know, it, it doesn't go far in and of itself, but when it's added into this pool of taking care of people, it, it joins with others and it becomes an amazing opportunity, an amazing offering. And so why don't we as the church join in this, become the declaration of God, of his faithfulness. You know, as we close today, let me, let me pray again. Pray that our hearts would be touched, encouraged, moved, challenged, engaged. Almighty God, you are good beyond our understanding, great in everything you do. And you invite us to be a part of your kingdom purpose. And Lord, may your church rise up. May your church become the living ladder of your love and your grace and your goodness that people would begin to see. Not that we're just you know, standing in these statements of faith, but in a statement of practice, of purpose, of living out your promises. God, knit our hearts together in one accord. May we walk in unity, in encouragement, in life, to the glory of your name. Amen. You know what? Stay in touch. Stay in touch via social media, via email. Keep questions coming, whatever it is, but let's engage together. God bless you. Enjoy the rest. Of the day.